before we start. So first of all, um, make sure that if you have any questions, we will be answering them at the end. So you will just go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, much like we said in the email, we do ask that if your questions are super, super specific to your individual situation, that you would maybe email those to your hub advisor. But if it's something more general, more, we're more than happy to address it here. The other quick disclaimer we want to throw in is that while we obviously are advisors and are here to help, we are not ARCH administrators and none of us in the hub are on the exceptions committee. So there might be the possibility that some of the questions you ask, we may not have a full answer to. So in those cases, we will give you the best direction we can, um, but just wanted to make that known. All right, so as we get started, let me just clear some things off my dash. All right, so just to kind of cover what we'll be talking about tonight, we're gonna to take you through a brief overview of the ARCH website. So you may or may not have looked at it before, but it actually has a good amount of information on there. So we're just gonna show you a couple highlights that'll be helpful. Also, I'm sure many of you have already started thinking about your different away experiences you might wanna pursue. So we'll kind of cover your different options and where you can get help on campus to secure those different opportunities. We'll also just give a quick reminder to register for admin 1030 and again a very quick overview of what that class will be. We'll also run through the exception process and how to engage in that since the deadline is coming up. Then we'll throw in some course selection tips and tricks from your hub advisors because we went through this with the class of 2021 last year and as I mentioned we will of course have some time for Q&A. All right so bear with me as I switch my sharing and let's take a look at the website. All right, so this is what the art web page looks like. I'm sure you've seen the summer here world away many times by now. So there are just a couple of things that we would like to highlight for you. So probably the most important one is down the right side of the page, there's this tab called important dates and communications. So let's click on that. So first of all, on this drop down, you have a list of all the important dates and deadlines that the ARCH office has lined out for you. So you can see when you can go to different um, workshops on campus, you can see general academic calendar things like when the last day of classes are, when certain um, applications open and close, things like that. So if you're ever wondering like last day of classes, when your bill is due, it's all gonna be in this nice neat spot right here. And then another wonderful thing on this web page is it's a catalog of all the emails you've ever received about Arch. So we know as students, you get sometimes literally over 100 emails a day, and it can be hard to go back and dig through those things. So they catalog all of your email communications, and clicking on any one of them will bring you to the full text of the email that you had received in the past. So definitely, if you need to reference those things, they are on the website. Make sure to check them. Also, another great resource. This is still set to last summer, but it'll be a great one when they update it for you all, is the Summer Here tab. So basically this will kind of tell you who's on campus for the summer to help you out. So all the hubs are open, um, the summer 2020 course listings will go up probably early in the spring semester. And then the most fun part is going to be these things like the academic field trips, the career development workshops, any of the pop-up classes over summer, they're all gonna be put here. So if you're ever looking for those different fun things to do, personally, I would really love to try goat yoga. Um, you can always find them on this webpage. And then also, as I mentioned, we will be talking more in length about the exception process later, but we know some people have been having trouble finding the form because it seems that Google directs to the old one if, as the first hit. So if you need to find that, on the right side of the page, there is exception process, and then there is the hyperlink here to the form. So as you can see along the side of the web page, there are a lot of really good resources here. So definitely take the time to parse through. A lot of your questions may be answered on this web page, but those are just some main highlights we wanted to point out. So bear with me as I switch back to the PowerPoint and we'll keep on rolling. So let's cover the different types of away experiences and how you can get help with securing these on campus. So first of all, a lot of students obviously are interested in pursuing either internships or co-ops for their away experiences. So just to kind of clarify what the difference is, because it's sometimes 
a little confusing. Generally speaking, for RPI's definition, a co-op is going to be six months or longer, and an internship will be less. So usually if something is simply one semester in length, it's called an internship. If it's a semester and then some, it tends to be called a co-op. Um, for the purposes of your way experience, it's more of a scheduling thing than anything else. Um, and then in terms of where to find them, your best friend in figuring all of this out will be the Center for Career and Professional Development, or CCPD. So obviously there are some great resources like JobLink that are online where you can start looking for opportunities. There will also be another career fair in the spring so you can go and meet with employers there, but definitely use the Career Center for to its fullest capacity. So you can make appointments with the counselors through JobLink. So on top of looking at your resume and cover letter, which if you haven't gotten it reviewed, you definitely should, they also can help Think of other places other than job link where you might want to be looking to do some of your job searching, some of your networking. And as you saw on the Arch website before, there are a lot of pop ups and workshops they're doing through the summer and throughout the rest of the spring semester as well. So between all of those things, there are a lot of ways to tap into their help when looking for internships or co ops. And another option is studying abroad. So there is the Office of International Programs. So this is going to be a joint effort between them and your academic advisor when it comes to planning. So RPI has two main types of study abroad programs. So we figured that would be important to cover the difference real quick. So some of our programs are what are called affiliated programs, which means we have a close partnership with that school. So some of the benefits of using an affiliated program are A, you can pay Rensselaer tuition, so that means any grants, aid, anything that's part of your normal financial package will apply for the tuition in your abroad experience. Also, affiliated institutions don't count against your transfer credit limit. So as a quick side note, if you entered RPI as a freshman, then your transfer credit cap over your four years is 32 credits. If you entered as a transfer student, your transfer credit cap is 64 credits. If you participate, in an affiliated program, then this does not count against that limit. Your courses will show up on your RPI transcript just like a regular RPI course. It'll have a GPA, all those good things. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do an unaffiliated program. So some examples of these would be a lot of the different study abroad you'll see third party co companies do, like things like Semester at Sea, for example. So you absolutely can pursue these if you want. They do just tend to take a little more planning on the front end to get your courses approved. And then obviously the financing piece will be out of pocket and on your own to handle. And it would count against your transfer credit limit. So it would come over, like for example, if you have APs or something, you would get the credits, but you would not have a GPA associated with them. So since there's so much to be figured out with credits, the Office of International Programs are going to be your friend when it comes to logistics, like applying to that other school, getting your visa squared away, things like that. The academic planning piece, you'll want to consult with your academic advisor. So if that's something you're interested in, it'll be a bit of a joint effort. And moving along in a similar vein, you can study at another U.S. college. So this one you're going to mostly lean on your academic advisor for. So there is a wonderful resource, if you Google it, called the RPI Transfer Course Guide. And this is a database of all the credits that people have attempted to transfer into Rensselaer before. So this can give you a really good sense of which colleges might be a good fit, what types of classes you can take while away, all those sorts of things. Now, given that uh, we don't have any like affiliated institutions within the US, so it would be out of pocket figuring out how the financing for that would work. Um, if you want to know how to apply to these schools on such a temporary basis, usually the best term to use in your Google search is visiting student. So, for example, if you type in like Boston University visiting student or something, that's usually going to get you to the page that explains the admissions process if you're just going to go there for a semester. And moving along, another option is students can engage in civic engagement or volunteer opportunities. So this again circles back to going to the Career Center for assistance in finding these sorts of things. There is a 260 hour requirement over the course of the semester. So just keep that in mind if that's something you're interested in. And then last but not least is the ILEs or the Individualized Learning Experiences. So these really kind of open up the world in terms of options and possibilities. So if you wanna go backpacking through Europe, if you want to work the summer job you've worked at your family's company for your entire life. It really kind of lets 
anything go. Um, so they have put on the RPI website, and we'll see if I can uh, share this with you. They put up an example of some ILE plans because we know that's something that there hasn't, uh, there's been some confusion about. So let me just switch over to my web browser. Got to get something out of the way, and then we'll switch tabs. Okay. So. Basically, they posted up a snapshot of the summaries of student developed ILE, ILE plans for the fall. So you can see that some students are planning to do like an independent study research project. Some people are doing volunteer opportunities. Um, some people are traveling the country and researching different companies. So especially if you have something entrepreneurial in mind, this might be a really good fit for you. And if this is something that you want to do, then your best reference is actually going to be the Office of Undergraduate Education. So they have some TAs, graduate students, who will sit down one-on-one -on -one with you and help you develop an ILE plan. So again, if this is something you want to do, there's definitely support on campus to get that prepared. All right, moving forward, let's talk a little bit about Admin 1030. So basically, Admin 1030 is a zero credit class that all sophomores have to take, and it basically prepares you for ARCH. So it does not have any meeting times. It's all through LMS modules. So if you haven't added it to your schedule, don't panic. It's not going to conflict with anything you've registered for so far. If you've already taken it in the fall, you don't have to retake it in the spring. If you have not taken it in the fall, you do have to take it in the spring. So if you didn't register, don't worry about it. Registration will reopen on December 16th, and the CRN is right on the screen. But if you go into SIS and go to the class search, the very first topic that comes up on the class search is usually called like administrative courses, and you can find it there to add. Now, we have been told that if you don't add it, you will get forcefully added to it. So there's not really any benefit to waiting and see if you don't have to do it. Uh, they will put you in the class if you don't put yourself, or at least that's what we've been told. So make sure to add yourself. And then in terms of the content, um, basically it just kind of is checkpoints for things that you likely will already, or at least should already be doing. So they'll have you upload a resume that has been checked by the Career Center. They have a checkpoint to see if you've been applying for away experiences, prepping ILE plans things like that. So um, that course is definitely not run out of the hub. So we aren't in charge of the content. But when you are looking in your LMS, when it finally loads in, that's going to give you a lot more information about deadlines, dates, content, all those things. All right, now let's do a quick overview of the exception process. So some of these things are pretty automatic. So those would be for ROTC or athletics. Um, there's a chart up on the screen. If you're in one of these programs, we're sure you already know. But basically, if you fall into the parameters on the chart, um, you will be exempt, but you still need to submit an exception request by November 29th. Then go through the form, go through the process. So again, make sure you submit even if you're on an ARCH exempt group. Now let's talk a little bit about academics. So one thing that's been a bit of a point of confusion is what qualifies for an academic exception. So it's kind of twofold. One thing that will qualify you for an academic exception is if based on the department's course offerings, you wouldn't be able to be a full-time student over summer, which is classified as 12 credits. So if there's not enough courses for you to take while you're here this summer that count towards graduation, then that would be a valid reason. Another would be if participating in the summer, um, whether it's based on department course offerings or something with the sequencing in your major, um, would delay your graduation. So one thing that we know is a challenge um, is that the summer schedule is not currently posted. Latest estimate we've heard is sometime late January, maybe early February. So we reached out to the ARCH office and asked like, for students who might be on that cusp where it's like, okay, I think I would have exactly enough classes to take this summer, but if two of them conflict, then this isn't going to work. Um, they said, if you have any doubts, submit it now, um, and then it can get looked at in the early spring. And then basically, um, these will all get looked at and evaluated by the exception committee. And then 
for career exceptions, this one will require documentation. So if you have an internship or something over the summer, what you would need to do is on the ARCH exception form, which I can show you in a minute, there's a spot to upload documentation and you need to upload a shot of your cover, or not your cover letter, um, your offer letter from that company. Um, and then again, we've been asked many times, what do you do if you get an offer after the deadline has closed? Then in that case, we've been told that students will be directed to bring that offer letter to the Career Center, and then they'll be evaluated there. Um, generally speaking, we've been told that if you have a good opportunity and it's one that's really summer only and not something that the company will move to fall or spring, they really do want the best outcomes for students. So again, best to submit things by the exception deadline if you can, but again, with academics and career things, if issues do pop up after the deadline, and we're sure they will, um, just know that there's still the ability to get some help. And then before we move on, let me actually show you kind of what the inner workings of that form look like. Okay, so I started my own exception request form and made it about halfway through just so we could land on this page. So the beginning is just more demographic data, your name, your RIN, things like that. And then this is the page where it gets a little more meaty. So you have to sort your request into a category. So again, um, athletics and ROTC are going to be pretty obvious. If you have like two things going on, like academic and career related, like you don't know if you'll have enough classes, but also you have an internship, just pick one or the other, and then you can explain further down in the rationale for requests. Um, I would say you probably don't have to worry about writing like a full essay here, um, especially because they have this option to do an attachment. So for example, if you were thinking of pursuing an academic exception, what we'd really recommend is working out your four-year plan on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document, anything readable, just to kind of show your planning and your progression to be like, hey, if I participate, this is the outcome. If I don't participate, here's the outcome. That really will help your case and your argument. So um, same deal, if you have an internship, that's where you would upload your offer letter. So Definitely uh, don't be afraid to use the optional attachment button. And then also don't feel like you have to write an entire essay in your rationale box as a result. So with that being said, again, let me just jump back. All right. And then last thing we'll talk about is some course scheduling tips and tricks. So the Hub Advisors helped the class of 2021 do this and everyone had their input in the slides. So. Uh, first and foremost, less is more. So this is not, summer is not the time to do 20 plus credits. Um, you definitely want to have some balance. Troy and RPI as a campus are absolutely beautiful over the summer. There are free concerts downtown every Wednesday on the river. So you want to make sure you have time to enjoy those things. And then another suggestion that a hub advisor made was try to use some of this time to take a Haas or a free elective or maybe a PD2. So again, trying to find that balance, time to enjoy things. You don't necessarily want to be in four wall-to-wall -wall, um, junior level engineering courses. Now, we seem to have gathered that word has spread on this, but a significant proportion of your technical courses are moving to the 12-week format this summer. So we imagine this will definitely help with balancing things, but it's still a good time to incorporate things like a Haas, a free elective, something like that. Now we have been told that YAX may or may not be available to plan out time blocks for summer courses. So we figure your safest bet is to assume it won't. And if it is, it's a great surprise. So just know that in advance and prepare to do this old school style. Um, basically some of the ways people were doing this last year, you could chart out times on graph paper or print out grid schedules for the week, or you could just list out the classes you're planning to take in their days and times. And you can check out if there are any conflicts. We trust that if you get through things like differential equations and physics too, you can certainly figure this out. Your parents had to when they registered. And then uh, last but not least, we did want to make you all aware. So ALAC tutoring has a bit of a different model over the summer. So instead of having a comprehensive drop-in schedule, they've told us that um, students should go to ALAC if they want tutoring in a class and submit a tutoring request form. And then they will arrange that accordingly. So just a bit of a different model, tutoring is still available, but just if you want something, just be prepared to go to the office, fill out a form and get that process started. So 
So with all that being said, those were all the things that we wanted to make sure you knew. Um, with, this would be the time for questions. So it looks like we have at least one. And if anything has come up for you along the way, please feel free to type it in the chat. We'll make sure to address it. So I see one of the questions we had before was, where do we submit ILE plans for admin 1030? It was not on LMS. Ooh, good question. We don't have access to LMS to actually see this. Um, my question to you guys, has anybody else who's on the forum tried to do this and had success? Because you can chime in at this point as well. And if we're unable to get an answer for you tonight, we will reach out to the Career Center who facilitates the Admin 1030 course and make them aware of the issue and find an answer for you. Has anyone else had any experience? This is Karen, by the way, hi. <laughs> <laughs> she told you she was here. All right. Well, Ethan, we're gonna get that answer for you, so, um, Make sure, uh, you know, we'll follow up on that for you. Can I post the module? I've emailed the instructor and didn't get a response. Okay, that well, definitely sounds like a problem. So yeah, we'll, we get, we'll get an answer for you tomorrow and we'll get in touch with everybody on this panel. If you guys can all um, just leave your email addresses or actually we'll just blast it out to the class of 22. I think that makes more sense. Yeah, I don't think that would hurt. And then I saw another question came in, which is, are there any consequences if you are registered for the admin 1030 course, but do not turn anything in? Or is it no big deal, just register again for the spring? I believe that you get a U in the instance that you don't complete the seminar this particular semester, but that you would get replaced with an S or a passing grade if uh, you, you follow up with the following semester. It has no impact on your GPA since it's a zero credit course, but there would be documentation that it wasn't complete this semester. Good question. Anything else? We'll give it like 20 seconds in case someone's typing. Yeah, this is the time to do it, guys. Ask away. We're here to help you in any way we can. So it seems like things are good, but again, if you have any questions, whether general or very specific to yourself, please feel free to continue emailing your hub advisors. We're still your primaries until the end of finals week, till which point we have to say goodbye. But <laughs> as always, feel free to drop back, say hello, grab a piece of candy. Um, we know after working with you all that you are a bright bunch and you will be in good hands as you move forward. So um, have a good rest of your night. And again, any questions, always feel free to reach out. Bye. Bye, guys.